You said you were already recording. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You were like, I got the recording thing going. No, I, got, I said I got the program up, ready to go. I didn't say I started it. Fine. Eat your food. <sighs> Time to start the podcast. This is the Player 4 Podcast. Join us each week as we talk about video games, entertainment, and pop culture, and bring in guests from the Rooster Teeth community. Player 4 has entered the game. Hello, and welcome to the Player 4 Podcast. Tonight, this night, every night, not every night, every week. I am Tristan, a.k.a. Shabbers here on the Rooster Teeth website. I am Alex, a.k.a. Chaos Black 21. And I'm Malachi, a.k.a. Suki Kiba. Well, I guess I'm not here since he said and. <laughs> <laughs> he's to you, see well, not Yeah, here. I know, right? What? I've been here, like, three weeks in a... No, I was here last week, last time we did it, which was two weeks ago. We you have know, our main guest you. this week. Yeah. <laughs> our our unspecial guest. Our guest who also is the editor and producer and essentially everything of the Player 4 podcast. Wow. The, the stand-in social media manager. <laughs> I manage social media. Sometimes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Should I introduce myself? I'm Joseph, a.k.a. AJ Dunlap on the Rooster Thief, Rooster Thief site. Rooster Face? Rooster face, yes, exactly. <laughs> Rooster dentures. Rooster dentures. Rooster joke teeth. Conventures. Conventures. So, uh, so. Oh my, wow, we're off to a great start here. Hey, Tristan, yes. you know what's fun? This is a segue. Reading uh, you know what's topic fun? List? Reading topics. Yeah. Except you to did it. it, you wrote it wrong again. It, it didn't, it doesn't even sound now correct. It's, you wrote, now it's just two picks. <laughs> yeah, two picks. <laughs> At least the first time when you wrote it T-A-W, you can still say it as topics. You could say topics. <laughs> Topics. This is two picks. So the two picks for today. Malachi has an eye inspection infection. Wait. What? Eye infection inspect eye infection. Uh the Woods, which is apparently a sugar premium seventy five. Warframe, Flames of Eidolon, followed by some Destiny initial impressions, and then finally getting the flip out of here. Malachi, okay. you started a thing. What well, I didn't start anything. Yeah, that one time when you wrote the topics and you wrote get the flip out of here and now we have to include it. Oh it's true. <laughs> it's like it's as good as hashtag goodbye, apparently. I, I Yeah. I have my <clears throat> moments of enlightenment. Enlighten us about your eye infection inspection. Oh, well, that's that's just weird life stuff. I don't know. My eyes swollen. Don't know why. Can't go to doctors. But I am still functioning, that's all that matters. Did you put a splint on your finger too? <laughs> <laughs> Just Did put you a splint, splint your on eye? your eye. <laughs> remember, you, remember, you got to put I it on both sides. Yeah. Both sides of my eye. Break the splint. Put the now. wrong sides. <laughs> <laughs> but How's yeah. your finger, Alex? Make sure you can't it, bend it's your eye. It's getting better. Did you, get, did you get looked at it? Yeah, it's it's, it's slowly getting better. I can. I, <laughs> I have a strong suspicion that he never went to the doctor about it. <laughs> I can either confirm nor deny that. I knew yeah, it. He goes, did you see the doctor? And he goes, yeah, it's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to go to the doctor. It was getting better. Well, that's <laughs> enough about Malachi's eye. And I want to know about his inspection. <laughs> what are oh, they inspecting? Malachi? It's just our corporation. It's not Mar uh, not the brand name's inspection, which is perfectly fine. That means if anything is wrong, they'll just yell at my GM. Uh, because it's the corporation that owns us. They do their own checkup on us to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Although, if Marriott comes in, they'll be like, yeah, if you don't get this fixed, we're taking your name. So They're going to uh, rename the company Malachi? <laughs> no, do you know that? If a hotel does not keep up to certain standards, uh, the people that own the name will clearly come and say, yeah, we're taking it. You can't have it anymore. Uh, I thought this was sort of like uh, Spirited Away, where she takes away your name. <laughs> it's pretty much. And makes you into, like, a slave, which is kind of bad. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I got to deal with tomorrow. Have fun with that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I hope it... they don't also inspect your eye, because they might fail you and take your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if he doesn't come back next week, then then he's a slave. Oh, gosh. This is going dark places, guys. <laughs> Moving Topics. on. Okay, Alex. We can Something move on. was created by Sugar Pine 7 that just came out. Yes, yeah, so Sugar Pine 7, who I've talked about in the past, but is a, it was 
born out of the death of SourceFed, and Rooster Teeth acquired them and just lets them do their own thing. They made a short film edited somewhere in the one to two month span of time. I'm not sure exactly how long it took. It's a short film about 20 minutes long. It was premiered in L.A. last night and then made available this morning around 10 Central on Rooster Teeth first. And basically the moment it came out, I watched it. It's not really what you would consider a short film. Those are like, oh, look at my short film. It's like profound sort of artsy film. This is more like a shortened version of a film. It's called The Woods. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is, as the trailer would suggest, somewhere along the lo loins. Somewhere oh, along God. the... <laughs> <laughs> somewhere along the loins of Steven Suptic. Yes, it's Steven Suptic's loins. It's somewhere along the, along the lines of a thriller or horror film kind of like you know how cabin in the woods was sort of along those lines so the woods is sort of referring to the danger of the woods we'll put it that way it's interesting because they set out to i haven't seen them talk about it i don't watch their podcast because i don't i don't really have time to sit down and physically watch a visual video podcast uh, I can watch hours because I just look over, oh, look, Alex put a picture. Okay, it's back to the slate, and I can just go back to what I'm doing. Yeah, it's just, oh, wait, you can you can kind of, I listen to it, and then if I've realized that I've missed any um, images, I'll go back and I'll, I'll find them just on the timeline. Mm -hmm. Plus, ours is a lot, le a lot shorter than a lot of the popular podcasts, so, you know, you're welcome, listeners. So I'm pretty sure they've probably talked about the woods at some point, but I don't, I didn't catch it. So I don't know what the intent behind it is, but I can tell you sort of what the impression was that I got. I enjoyed it. I'll say that from the get go. So I'm immediately going to start off with two thumbsticks up. I'm not even going to wait till the end of the review. Two thumbsticks up All off right. the bat. I gotta, gotta find that picture again. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> I wonder where you keep it since you can't find it. <laughs> Yes, you have to go back and watch the video and screenshot or something. I know. It's not like I have it saved somewhere. Yo, I have an image saved on my computer called Blank Screen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So that you can throw that up during streaming? No, I throw it up in uh, any video where I need a black screen. Gotcha. The fade to black at the end of our podcast when we're BSing at the end. Oh, okay. Anytime I need a black screen, I've got a file for that. Yeah, no, I, it's weird. Windows Movie Maker doesn't have a way to, to fade to black like Premiere did. Yeah, and, definitely. So here's my overall impressions of The Woods. It seems like they wanted to set out to make a 20-ish minute horror thriller about, oh, there's something in the woods, oh, people dying, that kind of thing, and just see if they could get the point across in that amount of time. With that, they succeeded. It really did have the feel of one of those hour and a half, oh, there's something in the woods, oh, it's killing us, we got to get away sort of movies, without all the fluff and all the wasted time, and especially this, without people being idiots the entire time. Mm. That's what I really enjoyed was, yes, there were mistakes made, but they didn't know what they were dealing with when those mistakes were made. Right. Once they knew what they were dealing with, they were like, okay, here's what we need to do, and then they do it. Well, that's <laughs> why that's why I liked cabin in the woods so much because it was subverting the trope by trying to explain the trope which was really fun like the whole in horror movies when they don't know what's going on somebody it says yeah let's split up you guys check over there we'll check over here everybody split up and cover more ground and you're like well yeah but that's how you get picked off one by one and so in, in cabin in the woods there was that moment where they said no no splitting up's a really bad idea let's not do that and in the movie, you know, they get gassed with something that causes them to, you know, lose their sense and start making bad decisions. I guess it's like um, vaporized, vaporized alcohol. It was my phone freaking out about <laughs> about like four notifications that should have come in 20 minutes ago that it was like, oh, yeah, I forgot I had these. Here you go all at once. You're welcome. I feel like the woods could be a response to Cabin in the Woods because instead of acknowledging the tropes, they just sort of try to improve upon them. And I think that both approaches are great. I think Cabin in the Woods is a cool idea in unto itself, a commentary on the genre, but also just trying to be a good movie in that genre. Yeah. I mean, they, they were in that situation. It's not like they were just sitting at a TV talking about the tropes, you know? Right. They were in the situation. And the woods was like, we're not going to insult your intelligence. These people are not idiots. 
these are human beings with motivations and brains that they're using. Now, there, there was a mistake or two being made by characters because in a stressful situation, you make stupid mistakes. But there came a point where they're like, okay, we need to do this and this, and we don't want to die. I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end, but they at least weren't trying to be idiots. Yeah. Another aspect of it was you cared about the characters. And I'm not just saying that as someone who knows who the cast of characters is because they even called each other by their Sugar Pine 7 names, which is their real names. Surprise. No way. Yeah, Devin was Devin. Steven was Steven. Kib was Kib. They killed was Joseph. James. Alex, what are we going to do? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I feel like we could make a short body. Film. They filmed it in, what, a day? We could probably do that ourselves at R R RTX if we wanted to. <laughs> While guardianing. No, I mean, like, we could just show up a day early and just film something. I feel like we could. But back to the topic, which is setting out to make a movie that was in the genre. It, it told the story in as complete a manner as they could in 20 minutes and did insult your intelligence. And you cared about the characters. There's a little bit of a... Uh, small town xenophobia element to it which i was talking to gina about that today and she was like why is that a thing why is that a trope people in small towns tend to be really friendly and I, and I was like it's a cheap device you know you can make them scary because it's like we look after our own you know outsiders not welcome you can sort of play off of that trope but in reality they tend to be pretty friendly folk out in the country they're not cannibals you know like in a uh, movie i think it was the walking people was it resident evil okay yeah it tends to be more like the couple in Wolverine Origins that was really nice to him and, and gave him clothes and then died. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of them. Or like the friendly, <laughs> the nice family out in the middle of nowhere in Poconos. The, the, the Wolverine movie, the most recent one. The end? The buddy movie with him and Xavier? Yeah, yeah that one. Okay. Logan? Yeah, Logan. Where they they uh, put them up in their house and they're really nice and then they die. <laughs> the buddy cop movie. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It 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 seems to be a common thread, at least in comic book movies. Uh, the gritty ones, you know, the country folk that put up the hero and then they die. And then they die. And then they die. The I killed them to get to you trope. Anyway, two thumbs six up. It's it's uh, not even a subversion of the genre. It's a it's a smart version of the genre that says we can knock out this story in 20 minutes. Very interesting, well made. So go watch it. It's on Rooster Teeth first. Give me my money. What's the production value look like? Does it look like it was shot on a shitty pocket cam? No, it's it's good production value. It's uh, pretty much like when they make their videos on YouTube where they actually put some effort into it, and it's good quality cameras. And I, I would like to see more from them where they make a short film that's trying to look like a blockbuster, just a 20-minute version of it. Okay. Uh, let's, let's hear about some video games, guys. There's there's, uh, there's two new video games that came out, Planes of Eidolon from Warframe and whatever the new Destiny thing is. Whatever the Destiny new Destiny 2. The, yeah, Destiny 2. The, 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 game. the new Destiny. Uh, that other Destiny. Destiny yeah. again. Tell me about that. Destiny again. <laughs> Destiny again. <laughs> well, Destiny again just released yesterday for the PC. Mm. So, you know, there are a lot of people out there who have already played it on the consoles. For a month know. and a half. So we're basically <laughs> skipping for <laughs> a, a month and a half. No, no, no. Half. We'll come back to it. I just figured we'd talk about the more popular one first. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. Carry on. So Destiny 2 being a sequel to Destiny 1, uh, it is, uh, first impressions is it is um, very similar to what you'd already done uh, in the first game. You were kind of, it's a little hard to say. I want to say that you were kind of learning the history of some kind of war that ravaged the Earth. There's like one colony left on Earth and it's being sustained by a magic orb. And then you're going out and um, trying to prevent the end of the universe by dealing with all these different races that have the keys to the to it, this weapon of mass destruction, and then you put a stop to that. And so with the next game, it starts off like you already saved the world and most of the soul system, so you're a hero, but then these guys from the Cabal, which are a faction that you meet on Mars, come down and they're like, so... You've got this this device, Traveler, and uh, you're not worthy of it. So we're taking that. And they kick your ass <laughs> and take it. And so uh, as far as we've played, which is not very far, uh, you're working on uh, getting that shit back and uh, getting them off of Earth because they are bad. The guy's name is Gaul, which is an interesting name, but it's G-A-U-L-G-A-L-L -L is the interaction. Gaul to attack you. 
Yeah, the gall. Uh, there's also uh, galling, which is when you take abrasive materials and, and scratch them against one, one another. So you take a smooth piece of metal and you gall it with another piece of metal. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what they were going for with his name, but he's a giant asshole and uh, took the took your magic orb away. And so we're kind of we're, we're learning. What I like about the game so far is that there is a lot more story being told in cutscenes and conversations between characters than you got in the first Destiny. Like, all the conversations between characters in the first game were good at developing those characters and making them likable, but it didn't tell you anything about why stuff was going on. <laughs> You're just like, all right, there are aliens to go fight, because they're aliens. Let's do it. So at least now you're kind of getting, they gave you a history of, uh, like, the game, the, when you first start the game, there's a cutscene that kind of tells you the wars that ravaged Earth and, and your your place and all of this and, and why the ghosts were put out to uh, to revive these fallen heroes from a yesteryear. So it's it's nice to kind of have at least a little bit of backstory on that, and I feel like they're going to fill in more as it progresses, so that's that's a good thing. Unfortunately, I didn't play the first Destiny, but I did see, like, little bits and pieces. Uh, the interface looks exactly the same. Like, it doesn't look like they really changed anything look-wise, did they? No, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty similar to the first one. It's, uh, you get your three weapons, a primary, uh, an, a kinetic weapon, an energy weapon, and a heavy weapon. You got jumping. They did Power add... Power weapon. Sure. They did add um, climbing, which is kind of nice. So if you jump high enough to grab a ledge, your character will grab the ledge and climb up it, which you couldn't do in the first game. So th that's a that's a mechanics change that was nice. Like you, I'm at the same point with you, other than I never played the first one, so I can't say, well, this is an amazing improvement they did here, or this is a really cool thing they did here. I'm just like, oh, hey, it's I shoot things, and I get equipment, and it's a story. Yay. Uh, I've beaten it because I had it on console. No one cares, Alex. And I'll say that there is actually a decent story to it. However, now I'm to the point where, like, I do, I still have to do all, like, the side quests and all that, and there's still plenty of those to do. But I've almost reached the point of maxing out my light level. So it's getting to the point where I'm like, I don't really have anything that I want to do until they release an expansion. Uh, get better gear that's like overpowered that's, because you that's at the, max that's, light level i'm not means. at max i'm at like 290 something but like the max is like 305 or it's like it's in the low 300s so mm. i'm really close yeah that was always a little bit tough although uh, i will say this though the change they made that's really kind of bugging me is that they made the sniper rifle a heavy weapon and so now I have to choose between being able to blow up enemies with an explosive or sniping them at range. And I really don't like having to make that choice. Uh, like, I prefer blowing them up. Yeah, but I used to, like, on Destiny 1, I had a sniper rifle as my power weapon at, because it was a power weapon. And I had a rocket launcher as my heavy weapon, so I could use them both as necessary. Wait, so so your sniper was your energy weapon, and your yes. rocket launcher was your power weapon? Are they not called heavy weapons anymore? It's power. I believe they're called power. Kinetic, Fine. kinetic, kinetic yes. energy power. Cool. Okay, then yes, my sniper rifle was my energy weapon, and my, my rocket launcher was my power weapon. I didn't like that change. I'm still mm -hmm. getting... I'm still getting used to that, and by that I mean griping about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, have you gotten to a point where you guys can make your own clan and um, join up? Nope. Okay. I mean, you'll get there eventually. <laughs> well, like, we did, like, mission two of the cooperative stuff. Like, once you can actually start mm -hmm. doing it with friends. Well, once you get towards the end, you start doing the extra stuff. The clan is a big chunk of how you get better gear. Because at some point, through the story stuff, you're going to have a hard time breaking a certain threshold on the light level. And then the only way to do that is to do the weekly activities and do clan stuff to unlock powerful gear is what they call it. And then that breaks you through the threshold. I assume that this means that clan in this case is different from the factions that you can join. This is an actual like player clan. Yeah, this is an actual player clan. Okay. Well, I know who's going to be in my player clan. Not me. No, no, hell no, Alex either. 
If only they could have joined computer and console together. Nobody, they never want to do that. I've seen a lot of games that have said, yeah, we're going to have cross-platform, and that usually goes away pretty quick. Because I mean, it's, are it's limited. Different, different playing styles, too. You have the computer that people can just aim with their mouse, so it's a lot easier, and then the, the console players have to use the joysticks. I don't know so why. Whoop. Why wouldn't you? I don't just aim with your mouse. <laughs> I don't agree with that, Alex. Because if you play the game enough and really do enjoy it, you will be as efficient as a keyboard player with a controller. No, actually, you uh, won't. You can't. You because of the the uh, limitation of the joystick, you cannot actually turn and move over as fast as you can with a keyboard and mouse with the precision that keyboard and mouse is. That's a, that's actually a proven fact. Mm. If you do PVE stuff. It'll be fine, but you could never combine them in PvP. Yeah, no. The computer has just way too many advantages over console and PvP. So why doesn't everybody just, you know, jump on the bandwagon? PC Master Race, man. Because I prefer consoles. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I prefer consoles when I'm going to be sitting in my underwear and be back to eating Cheetos. You don't do that at your computer? No. Why not? Because it's too shiny to do that. All right, great silence. So you guys are having fun with Destiny, at least then. Yeah, we're having fun with Destiny. We're just, we're just, yeah, we just today was the first day we got to kind of uh, play it together, and it was a good experience so far. Definitely gonna go play it some more after we're done here. After we get the flip out of here, get the flip back into Destiny. Um, the other new thing that Malachi and I have been partaking of has been the Plains of Eidolon, the the newest expansion update, we'll call it, to uh, Warframe on Steam, and that's. Mm-hmm. A lot of fun. You could probably consider expansion because it did add a new, new. Well, I'd consider it more of a map than a tile set. It's not a tile set. Yeah, it's like a whole new. It game. is. It's a new area. So normally the game runs in the form of individual missions. You you choose a place and it tells you you run this mission here. You grab four people. You run the mission and then you know you're done. They're individual missions. Some are you know do one objective and you leave. You can get it done in 30 seconds. Some are you can stay as long as you like and keep completing the objective at harder and harder difficulties. You know, endless. horde. Right, endless horde or horde mode, uh, as some people might call it. But then that was pretty much it. You know, you load in, do the thing, load out, load up the next one. This new update has introduced an area where you can go down and it's just a big open world uh, exploration zone where you gather materials. There's, you know, mining and fishing and things like that that you can create uh, different kind of baits and lures out of or trade in for renown standing with the uh, people who live there. Sell them your fish. Sell them your yeah. rocks. And also, the fishing is not a fishing pole. Well, it's a it's a pole, but you throw the damn thing at the fish. It's pretty cool. It's a, it's a it's a fishing spear. I'm too good to right. wait. You're too good to wait. <laughs> Stab the fish. Oh yeah, yeah. Stabby <laughs> stabby fish. So um, that's pretty cool. They also another thing that came with it is the the namesake of the plains of Idolon, which are the Idolons which are gigantic Godzilla monsters that you have uh, epic multi-stage fights with. Not all of them are giant Fine. Godzilla the, monsters. The Eidolon Terrorists are giant Godzilla monsters. The Eidolist Vombolus are not, but they come and power up the Terrorists. And it all kind of plays into this ever-evolving storyline that they've put into the game. They keep uh, changing. That they... In. Little bit, yeah. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I, could, I could go on for hours yeah, about that. Yeah, no. But I will not. Suffice it to say that the update has been quite fun. It's added um, quite a few new cool uh, mechanics and items and just new place to explore and fly around, and it's been a lot of fun. It's yeah. got a day-night cycle, and different things happen during the day and night, so there's Ooh. a lot to, that we're still discovering about it. Yeah, they're really trying to capitalize on uh, the uh, mechanic they introduced uh, quite a few patches ago, which is the operator. The ability, yeah. If I'm allowed to digress for a moment here, the whole idea, in my opinion, of Warframe is that you play in the Warframe. The idea of the Warframe is this this giant power suit with special abilities and practically immortal, and you become a god of war while you're in this thing. And a couple patches back, they introduced the concept, like, we always knew that somebody was piloting these, these things, but, like, Tony Stark style. 
Um, mm -hmm. But in the update, they made it so that it was more like puppeteering than being inside the Warframe. So it was like, okay, that's that's not a big deal, sure. Rather than being in the Warframe, it's it's somebody who's basically like Professor Xavier, you know, in another dimension, remote piloting them. Whatever, It's I don't like it as much, but it's not a problem. And then they suddenly said, oh yeah, um, you're, you're, these, these Professor Xavier guys can step through the Warframe onto the battlefield where they can use these other, you know, special powers they have. And I'm just like, why, why would you do that? That's what the Warframe is for, so that you don't have to go onto the battlefield where you can, um, die. So yeah, the, it, they this new update they really were expanding on that, and uh, they changed a lot of the functions of the operator to fit the new update. So that's one of the big things they were. Maybe. They've been they've made them a little bit more combat oriented, and they've added a bunch of mechanics that kind of force you to switch tactically, strategically between Warframe and Operator, and mm -hmm. it's still. It still bugs me, you know. It's that's a, that's a love -hate it's the end. Of, yeah, it's the end of my digression. It's just why? Why would you get out of a thing called a Warframe if its whole purpose is to fight for you? It's it's a proxy for the hell of it. Yeah, I guess. Look how cool I am. It's I also to siphon the energy from you so you don't die or two. Also, right? That's what the Warframes were for, right? That that was the whole thing was that the operators were infected, yeah. infused overflowing with this energy that was going to kill them and so they needed to shed it and so they created the warframes to siphon that energy off and then redirect it into a more usable form which was hey anything that threatens earth we can blow the hell up there's a lot of cool fan art with before all this happened with uh unmasking of the warframes which is sad that it's no longer a concept or it's been Debunked. eliminated yes. forever yeah, well, in any event. But the update has been a great deal of fun, and um, I'm, an, I'm still enjoying it. play it every day. And Rick is jealous. <laughs> Rick is super jelly because it had the Planes of Eidolon. I think it's out now, but a few, uh, like last week, it hadn't released on consoles yet. It, it pulled an opposite of Destiny 2. Yes, they released PC first. <laughs> well, because they didn't actually introduce the console version until, what, the last year? I think so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was always, it was PC only for a long time. Yeah. Just the whole game. But it's fine. I mean, Rick can watch the uh, streams that we've been doing on Twitch or on there YouTube. You where they end up after we stream. Was there anything else we got for today, guys? Uh, getting the flip the out of here. Again. Yep, getting the flip out of here is the last thing. I'm in favor of getting the flip out of here. Uh-oh, Joseph's done. No, it's fine. Joseph, the shoes are off. Joseph's about to start no, wailing. So the shoes are off. I was going to say, traditionally, the person who has no experience in the topic asks questions, but you guys discussed everything so thoroughly. What was the point? You guys did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> Thank you. Shoes are off. My shoes Definitely are off. Definitely, for anyone wanting to see Planes of Eidolon, our live streams are a great place to go anytime we're live. Do we send out tweets when we're live, or should we, perhaps? I think it does. I, I, I At least I get, if you follow the uh, mm -hmm. twitch.tv slash p4podcast, you'll get an email alert. Uh, I also tend to, I now have the Twitch app on my phone, so I get a phone alert anytime one of the channels I'm following goes live. And then you can also check the the archives. There's a playlist for every possible game or show on our YouTube channel. You can just go look at the archives of our Planes of Eidolon stuff. It's under Warframe, obviously. And maybe there will be a Destiny playlist. Apparently, you do have to watch out because there was some article saying that if you use certain things, you will get banned permanently mm. when recording. Interesting. You'll get banned from Destiny. Yeah, I noticed that it was weird. I've seen, I feel like they they were advertising certain streams of like the Destiny beta and stuff. But when I tried to create a uh, profile for it on OBS, I could not select the Destiny program. It wasn't appearing on my program list. Mm -hmm. So they must have made it so you can't. And if you are capable of doing it, they. That's probably it's not it a must-have, but it's definitely possible, so I didn't want to screw around with it when I wasn't sure if it was okay to stream. Yeah, I don't know. I can try to find the article because someone posted it on uh, 
the Discord I'm in with Lozelda. So that's how yeah, I know about it. I just it. saw something about like a Discord overlay getting you banned until you disable the overlay. Hmm. Yeah. So it's definitely something to watch out for, but do watch out for our archives of any game that we live stream. They'll be on YouTube. Tristan is really good about just getting that straight up there. Occasionally, it'll be a big I, chunk and all. Very occasionally. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully sorry, no, we no, can no. be I consistent very, with it. Very occasionally do I forget. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes. I was like, wait, what do you mean occasionally? You do it all the time. Yes. <laughs> Gina bought a Keurig from my office. And oh. so now you just drink coffee all day. You just... Take no, I don't. All day, or day. <laughs> At that point, why don't you just put an IV in and have it strapped to the Keurig? <laughs> Intravenous. <laughs> no, it's, we put it in this afternoon, so I've had one cup, and then I had a, a student was in my office, and I was like, here, have some coffee. But I have a sign above it that says, you know, welcome for anyone to use, bring your own cup. Donation strongly suggested, no donation needed if you bring your own K-cup. Otherwise, suggested donation for one K-cup plus two creamers is 75 cents, which I'm not looking for a profit, I'm looking for a solid number, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anytime my office is open, which means I'm in, in my office, anyone can pop in, get a cup of coffee, and leave. Yeah. It's something I've been thinking about for a while, you know? Anyone well, who pops nice, by and nice of you. Hey, Malachi, what's the next topic? Getting the flip out of here. Are we done talking out of our mouth holes? I'm ready to start flipping. Oh, I got my other mouth hole I could talk out of. I don't want to ask. <laughs> Must be a LARPer Yikes. thing. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Hashtag goodbye. goodbye. Enjoy your destiny. Will do. Goodbye. We're gonna have Hi, to Malachi. Get... All right. <laughs> what? I did say bye. I'm sorry. I enjoyed that last. She's like, I I'm too busy playing more Destiny. Me? I enjoyed Alex's video. Thank you. You enjoyed the Player 4 Toots the most? I liked Player 4 Toots. <laughs> Let the bum tooting commence, man. Because I remember when I was, when I said it on, the, on that episode, you quickly like disregarded it and tried to move past it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> so I'm like, nope. freaking making this a thing. <laughs> <laughs> nope, this is happening, guys. Thanks to the following patrons for making this video possible. Support us at patreon.com slash player4podcast.